Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. And I wanted to share with you my latest take on mono red aggro. Um, first of all, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. I really do appreciate you. Um, I do also want to let you know that the deck list will be in the description both on moxfield.com and untapped.gg. And there will also be a link to my playlists there as well, both for uh, limited content and constructed. So if you wanna check out some of my other videos, they should be in the description. I do also wanna give a big shout out to my members. So thank you guys so much. Um, I wanna welcome, um, we have a new member. So first of all, Kibo at the dedicated level and Hernie the Horned. Um, I really do appreciate you guys. And for all of my uh, initiate level members, thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate you guys. If you wanna become a member and help get early access to my content and support the channel, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so jumping into the deck. Um, I had a look at my most recent version of Mono Red that used Invasion of Tarkir, which I think is just an excellent card here for the current meta. Um, basically, this lets you deal with aggro in a really good way by playing this invasion. This does um, X plus two damage to any other target, where X is the number of cards revealed um, that are dragon cards in your hand. So you could, if you have one dragon in your hand, you can do three damage to a target when this comes into play. Two dragons, you can do four damage, etc. This is really good against the other aggro decks. It's great against mono red aggro. It's great against Boris Convoke, uh, mono white humans, which are all pretty big players in the meta. And then if you're up against control decks, you can just kind of use this to go face and then ignore it. But for all the aggro decks, you do want to try to flip this. And you've got a lot of great ways to flip it. Basically, we're sort of tacking Invasion of Tarkir into the Mono Red uh, Prowess deck. So we're kind of doing sort of an amalgamation of the two decks here, where you've got Slickshot, Show Off, Fugitive Codebreaker, and Monastery Swift Spear, which all benefit from playing lots of spells. And then for our dragon cards, we have three Shivan Devastators, which help kind of add extra damage to Invasion of Tarkir. And then once this card is flipped, all of your dragons, whenever you attack, will do two damage to any target, as long as you have the Defiant Thunder Maw in play. So Shivan Devastator um, basically is a flying haste dragon that you can pay X for to give it um, X plus one plus one counters when it comes in. And then I also wanted to add the new card, Stinger Back Terror. So this is a card that is, you know, kind of a limited bomb, but also you can plot this card, and so you can plot it at three mana if you're not able to get to four mana. Um, it is a seven seven flying trample dragon for four mana, and it gets minus one, minus one for every card in your hand. And so with a deck like this that's super low to the ground, this is routinely like a five five, a six six flying trample for three or four mana, which is just kind of amazing. In addition, it will also make your invasion of Tarkir even better. Um, so I feel like it was a natural inclusion. If you wanted to, you could use this slot for um, Godric instead. Godric is also a great card in this deck, but I wanted to try out the new card. And because this is already a dragon, it doesn't take extra steps to turn it into a dragon, it's going to make Invasion of Tarkir even better. So for our pump, we have four copies of Monstrous Rage, which is just a fantastic pump card probably the best pump spell in the format right now. Um, plus two plus zero and giving it a monster roll token, which gives it plus one plus one and trample. So functionally plus three plus one and trample uh, at instant speed. And then you've got three copies of Demonic Ruckus, which is um, 
a card you can plot for one mana, and then when you enchant the creature, it gets a plus one plus one uh, and menace and trample. So I kind of wanted to have some number of pump spells, but I didn't want to go overboard. I know a lot of the mono red decks are running the, um, God, I can't think of it. It's the sorcery. It's plus one plus zero in trample, um, and then gets uh, plus X for every copy in the graveyard. I can't remember the name of it, but um, basically it just, it's, it's a card that you can get blown out pretty easily if they have removal. And yes, it's good, but I feel like you know, kind of going with the dragon theme is kind of more interesting. In addition, um, cards like Invasion of Tarkir and Komodo Faces Kakazan are fantastic in this deck, both for Slick Shot, Show Off, Code Breaker, and Swift Spear because they are both non-creature spells, but they're also, they can turn into creatures, which can then help your creature count for actually finishing the game. So I did also have, um, I wanted to make sure to have some burn in the deck. We've got four copies of Lightning Strike, three copies of Play With Fire, and then we have the four copies of Invasion of Tarkir, which can do anywhere from like two to four damage, essentially, depending on how many dragons we have in our hand. So I think between all of that, you've sort of got your bases covered. Um, I had a look at the a lot, a lot of different mono red decks that are currently running around on ladder in best of one are running somewhere between like 18 to 19 lands. So we're gonna try a little bit of a tighter mana base here with 19 lands. Two copies of Sokanzen, one copy of Mishra's Foundry, and then 16 basic mountains. So again, because you're playing Demonic Ruckus, typically on turn one, you kind of have um, 11 one drops that you wanna play between Kumano, Monastery Swift Spear, and Demonic Ruckus. So that gives you a pretty good chance of being able to do something on turn one almost every game. Okay, all that said, really excited to try this out. Let's go ahead and jump into some games. One of the reasons that I think this deck is really good right now is because it really preys on other aggro decks. Um, the Invasion of Tarkir is so backbreaking against aggro that I think it just kind of gives it the natural leg up. So this hand is amazing. We've got two land, lots of stuff to do. And up against blue here, could be mono blue. We've got a number of different turn one plays here. We can go for the turn one demonic ruckus we can go kumano faces kakazan i feel like this is always a good play here so i think you know especially with blue running with bounce and all kinds of other nonsense i think i'm going to go ahead and just get uh, kumano faces kakazan going <clears throat> this way next turn we can go like swift spear plus ruckus to set up um, or we can just try to play out the show off but I think because they have counter spell mana here I'm just going to go for the swift spear and just hope that lands and then I guess we can attack here and see what they do but with open mana I'm really not going to go for monstrous rage here and we'll just set up here with ruckus Again, not excited to use Demonic Ruckus into open mana. So I think here we can just try to go for the show off. We can, you know, even just like set up with show off by plotting this and just attack and see what they do. And I kind of like setting this up with plot just because they've got all kinds of nonsense. So I think we're gonna do that. Could also play Devastator here, that'd be fine. Basically, we're kind of looking to have them, we're sort of playing a game of chicken here. 
trying to get as much of their removal out of their hand first. And again, still with three cards in hand and open mana, I think we're probably now going to go for maybe like the Devastator play. I guess we could go for Slickshot Show Off here and just see what they've got. But I kind of think we want to save this a little bit. So I'm just going to see if they if they bite with um, Shiv and De Devastator on three. Okay, well now we can go ahead and get show off going. In this way, at least we ensure that we connect with uh, Demonic Ruckus. Stingerback Terror is here, a great card. Um, I think, yeah, let's attack first, see what they do. We could probably push with Rage here, but again, there's a decent chance they've got some piece of removal or something, so I think I'm just going to pass. And now the question is, do they have like a board wipe? Um, but I think we can go ahead and play this, force him to have it. Either that or a counter. Now we can try to refill here fairly soon. We've got, actually we don't really have any instants or sorceries in the graveyard yet. So maybe we just play Codebreaker face up and just push. I think I like that. So I think we'll start here with play with fire. <clears throat> and see if we can get them to use any removal if they've got it. Do we want another show off? Kind of tempted to go for it here with Monstrous Rage. I mean, they they don't necessarily have another piece of removal here. They might just want to go for like Mirix token. Like we are threatening lethal. Yeah, I guess we'll keep that on top and go for it. Now they're getting close to burn range. And they might just be out of juice at this point. That'll do it. <clears throat> yeah, so I think the really important thing there is just like making sure that you wait until you have the open window to have your, your buffs connect. And I think that's kind of why I don't like having like 11 or 12 different sources of pump because you can't really wait that long 
to try to pump your your creatures you've got to sort of get something going with a couple fewer pump spells you can kind of sort of waste time and stall before actually going for it kind of like we did in that in that last game opening hand looks great um, so we have the Kumano faces Kakazan or Demonic Ruckus. And I like Kumano usually. I mean, it's always good. But like Ruckus on to show off is pretty sweet also. Saving the mana. We've got two creatures, so we could always do Kumano like the following turn. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll try it. Since we're on the play. Okay, looks like they are the toxic combo deck here. So now I think we just get show off going. I guess Codebreaker is a little bit more damage right now. But show off will be eventually more damage later. Do we want to try to Monstrous Rage? <clears throat> I think we just Lightning Strike here. We want to get their Shredder off the table. Okay, so now we could Codebreaker into Monstrous Rage. They will get the, um, the activation on Shredder if we do that, but I think that's fine. We just want to keep pushing damage here. Alternatively, we could plot the Terror. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like Codebreaker here. They bounce here, it's kind of rough. Question here. I don't know if we do both Kumanos pre combat. I guess, like, that'll make this a 3 5, and then this could, you know, 
just block this and, and deal with it. So I think we don't. Because now they'd have to double block. Problem is we don't get to kill both. So I, I guess it's not that different. It does give them a little bit more card selection, but I think there's enough benefit here to going for it. I guess they're just gonna pack it in. That works. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got two turn one plays. I'm really tempted to keep this hand, even though there's a decent chance that we just don't get there. But like, we have things to do for the first two turns if we miss. I think we keep it. I mean, this deck doesn't mulligan super well. This might be a bit ambitious, but I think we keep. So the question now is do we play with fire to try to fix our next draw? I guess we can still do that on our upkeep. I think I'm just going to go Kumano here and like hope we just natural draw. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess seeing Scamp, maybe we should have just gone for the Scamp right away. Fortunately, we did not hit. Trying to see if they're going to pump here. If they choose not to pump, then I think we just play with fire because we want to keep our Kumano in play to deal with this scamp. So I think we just play with fire there too, too. Although I guess they can just pump then in response, which is kind of awkward. Yeah, 
this is super awkward. I think we just pass. This was a sketchy keep for sure. But I feel like it could have gotten there. Yeah, probably should have should have mulliganed. I guess I just I'm not sure how good this this deck is on the mulligan, and I feel like there's a decent chance we get there. The other possibility is you could potentially run like twenty land instead. Although I've seen, you know, some of the decks that are doing like in like the fifty eight to sixty percent win rate on untapped.gg are running like 18 land, so it is certainly possible. This hand could definitely get there. Uh, we do need a little bit of interaction, but I think with three land, we're gonna keep. Yeah, one of the things I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure about, like, Godric is still a very good card, and so not sure if it if the Stingerback deserves the spot over the Godric, but in a couple games that I have seen it, it has, uh, it has done pretty well, so we're trying it out. Okay, they've got their slick shot ready. Question is, do we just wait lightning strike? I kind of think we do.
Unfortunately, we don't have a play with fire to hold up. So we potentially could get into trouble if we just like sit here and hold up mana. But I think for the moment we do respect it. Opponent is deep in the tank. Okay. And I think, unfortunately, we kind of continue to play chicken here. So we could have tried to wait for the Monstrous Rage, but I, I feel like... Okay, I'm surprised they put it there. Thought they were gonna put it on the Code Breaker. Yeah, that seemed like a pretty big mistake. Wow, okay. A little bit of a misclick there, I guess. This opening hand looks great. We got turn one Ruckus into Slick Shot. And I think what we want to do here is go. Um, Hmm. Yeah, let's just go Slick Shot here because they don't really have a ton of removal for the World Soul deck other than the World Soul's Rage. So we can get Slick Shot going. And then I think there's a decent chance we do want to flip Invasion. could also be gearing up for playing ill-timed explosion so I'm not sure that we want to play the other slick shot this turn we could go invasion and flip it or we could like leave it on one in case they want to like invasion next or uh, ill-timed explosion next turn Otherwise, we just push a lot of damage this turn, which still feels pretty good. Um, but then we're going to have a little bit of trouble killing Kellen. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll flip Invasion. 
or at least start working on it. I think we save the monster's rage here and we maybe leave it on one in case they want to just like board wipe. So now that we've invested Kellen, I think we do want to flip Invasion. And I think maybe what we'll do is we'll prep our Slick Shot, but not play it this turn. Just in case they've got the ill-timed explosion, just so we don't have our whole deck out there. Alright, so now I think we play Devastator for three, leaving up Monstrous Rage. Then we can double target the Analyst so they won't, aren't able to use it. Although I guess if we had just gone face, ah, we probably just missed lethal there just by, instead of going for their, uh, I didn't realize how much damage we had coming in for their af aftermath analyst. So yeah, we should have just gone face with both of the dragons, or I guess taking out their blocker. Because now I guess if, like if this turn, if they had ill-timed explosion, they could get us. They probably don't have it here, but I think, yeah, that was, we were just missing lethal there.
Yeah, I guess with Splunkin they could still have ill-timed explosion. But yeah, with no mountains, I think they don't have any outs at this point. Okay, so yeah, we missed Lethal that turn before, but still got there. Just kind of getting used to the deck. Although, as you can see, it has a lot of power. Um, let's take a look at the stats. So currently 80% win rate, 4 wins, and 1 loss. Um, yeah, very happy with the deck so far. Definitely give it a whirl, try it out. I think this is a nice mix of both pump and burn, having seven pump spells and 11 burn spells between the uh, four Monstrous Rage, three copies of Demonic Ruckus for pump, and then three Play With Fire, and four Lightning Strike, and four Invasion of Tarkir for burn. So even though you didn't have a chance to see games where we got stinger back terror out this card is pretty nuts and would definitely recommend trying it so thanks guys for watching and we will see you next time mm -hmm.